Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's been a while. Hello, uh, my name is Immaculate Gorana, and with me is. Say your name now. Okay. <laughs> Say your name now. But not your video now. Uh -huh, it's you not yet, but it's there. You said, you said <laughs> my YouTube channel. When? My YouTube, oh, my YouTube sorry. Wow. Our, our YouTube. Welcome back wow. to our YouTube wow. channel. Wow. <laughs> sure, I told you before wow. that this is my YouTube channel. Go cause problems wow. only. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. Uh, this is another video in my teaching series and my teaching journey series. It's and so my guy, my guy is here, but he's not really part of this. But I know he'll be making some random comments to the side. Just ignore him. Thank you very much. Um, for this video, I want to talk about my interview process, how to get, how I landed the job, how, you know, I went through the whole process and what the interview, how the interview works in Brighton. Ha! <laughs> but, um, generally, I think the teaching interview process and the teaching, you know, um, employment process in the UK should pretty much be the same all around. I don't think there'll be much difference. So I'll just talk you through how mine went and what it entailed and things like that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. So once again, you see me looking through this phone and that's because I have listed quite a number of things I want to talk about. So I don't forget anything. I'm going to be reading from my phone sometimes. So bear with me. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is that I have already spoken through how I got my job and um, where I saw the job because I didn't actually see it, how basically I got the job. The whole thing about me, you know, going for a certain interview and then the assistant head teacher of that school introduced me to my head teacher of this, my school where I'm teaching now. And that was how I got this job. So I've already spoken about that in a previous video, which I will link up here. If you're interested, please do watch it. Um, so yeah, I've already spoken about that. So what I'm going to be focusing on talking about in this video is the actual interview process. When you actually apply for a job and they invite you to an interview, what are you going to be expected to do? Or what are your expectations in that interview? That's what this video is going to be about. So the first thing is I want to mention about the difference between one interview and another interview. So for instance, my first ever job application, the interview process was quite tricky. It was very, very complicated. So what I had to do was the first thing, once I got into the school, I had to write a test. After writing a test, I had to do a lesson to um, a class. And then after the lesson, then the school or the head teacher or the assistant head teacher, the people on the panel basically, will decide based off the outcome of that lesson if they even want you to proceed for the interview stage at all. So if you don't do your lesson well, which happened in that particular case, if you don't do your lesson well, then you're not even, they're not even going to bother to interview you. So that was how my first experience went. The second one, I was um, invited to do a lesson and then do an interview before they now told me I was not successful. At other times, of course, you get regret to inform you, they won't even invite you for an interview at all. So yeah, it varies on the school. For this my school where I'm working now, I had to write a test. After the test, then I did a lesson observation. And after the lesson observation, I did an interview. So those were my three stages before I got a job in this school. And then after your interview, there are two ways in which you know how you got the job. Number one, if the interviewer and everybody is too busy to give you an immediate feedback, then they will tell you that they will contact you to give you a feedback. Sometimes it might be the same day, Sometimes it might be the next day, but it doesn't take more than at least two to three days before you get feedback for teaching. It doesn't take long. They give you feedback about your interview as quickly as possible. For instance, in this my job, I knew on that same day that I had gotten the job. Um, so some people will give you that day. Some will give you a feedback the next day via email or phone call. Like um, the school where the assistant head teacher told me about this head teacher, they called me the next day to tell me. So sometimes they'll send you an email, sometimes they'll give you, you know, a phone call. So depending. So that's the second thing. And where did I see the opening for jobs? So when I was searching for a job, I was still living in Brighton. And for Brighton, there's um, Brighton and Hove Council. Of course, teaching job in the UK is like a government um, job. 
so most of the schools are always under you know the council like brighton and hove council or warding council um under west sussex as you know an area of its own and things like that so it's basically a teaching job it just depends on what council you're in or what city you're in and things like that so i searched <coughs> oh i keep choking i searched for job on brighton and hope council i also searched for job on tes um so different websites i will link the websites in the description of this video different websites where you can search for um, teaching jobs in the uk um so that's where i saw the opening how did i apply including filling the form but how did i apply so for every city you're looking for a job for every city that you live in the council has their own application forms for teaching jobs in the uk you do not need to fill a cv the application forms for each council have their own cv in fact it's not just the council for instance there are some schools that are under academies if you are under academy like my school i work with now is under an academy if you are under certain academies those academies have their own application forms so teaching jobs generally in the uk do not require cv you don't need to have a cv for a teaching job you just obviously when you get the form you have to fill in all the same information as a cv but they're all in different stages they're all filled in, in different ways depending on where you're applying for instance Brighton and Hove council form Will be different from birmingham council form and things like that so just that's just basically it you don't need to worry yourself about what my cv is going to look like no in your form all the information that you need to fill will be there and it's advisable to put in every single information that you can give about your past experience and your past lives for instance where you've lived if there's a gap and i remember this very clearly i filled one of my application forms for a school i was applying in brighton and when they gave me feedback about why I was not called for an interview, they told me that when I filled in my where I have lived and my employment details, like my employment breakdown of when I worked, what year to what year, I missed out a particular time, period of time. So there was a period of time where I was unemployed. I didn't put that in because I just figured I was not doing anything, so it was irrelevant. But I was supposed to put in, for instance, if you did not work, from november 2020 to december 2020 you need to put in there november 2020 to december 2020 unemployed put it there let there not be a gap so there is no october 2020 and then january 2021 there's a gap there so make sure that all your details are filled in chronologically you're not missing anything out your time of work where you have lived the time frame must tally even if you lived somewhere for only one week put that one week there it is required don't miss any detail out so yeah that was how i lost an actual job interview because i missed one month of unemployment in my application form so something to note i guess and then stages of the interview questions asked and how to answer so sometimes in the interview you might um for instance in a particular school that i went for an interview i actually interviewed with the school student council so of course i'm a primary school teacher student council was year six students so i actually interviewed with year six students first and they asked questions <laughs> they asked me questions so you have to be prepared um the interview in the school it might come in different ways things like that there are different stages depending on what school it is because each school has their own process this time around is not each council each school has their own process so prepare for each application you're sending your interview preparation will definitely be different just take note of that and then questions asked and how to answer so before i left university of brighton we had um a new teacher an ect early career teacher who came in to tell us how he's doing in his first year and he also shared with us some questions that he was asked during his own interview time and how he answered them so i still have that list if you are interested send me an email our email is always in the description box so send me an email i can send you a list of questions that might possibly be asked at a teaching job interview and these are questions that no matter what you get if not at least five you will get at least three of those questions asked including one safeguarding question there's no two ways about it no matter where you are in the uk you will be asked a safeguarding question 
are you asking yourself what is safeguarding sorry i cannot tell you that in this video <laughs> it's too much to talk about but yeah you will be asked a safeguarding question any teacher or probable teacher possible teacher teacher in training who is watching this video already knows what safeguarding is okay um the next thing i have on my list is my teaching observation and preparation i've gone into one of my interviews and i was not really prepared for that lesson i didn't plan it properly it was just upside down it was a mess to be very honest so i would say if you're going into a teaching interview and you're supposed to plan a lesson to be observed my first tip make it short and precise second thing focus on one thing like that observation where i went in and i did absolute nonsense i was focusing on too many things i wanted to do vocabulary i wanted to do it was an english lesson i focused on vocabulary prediction so many different things but the next one i planned with the help of my mentor i focused on only one thing which was only vocabulary i read just one part of a book to the children and i got them to tell me what new vocabulary they found and things like that so focus make it very short and precise on one thing and focus on one part of what you're teaching don't do too much it's an observation it's not a full lesson okay okay the next thing i have on my list is tips for an interview so when you go into an interview what are the tips that you must know i have listed them in my phone and i am going to list them out i'm going to read them out talk about them when i shoot and then i'm going to list them out um there are quite a lot so we'll go through it because i don't want this video to be too long okay the first one i wrote is be confident but be wise when answering questions be confident but be wise while you want to say a lot and sell yourself very well you need to be wise about the things you're saying don't give off answers that you cannot back up with evidence in your practice so be confident yes answer the questions confidently but be wise the second thing is listen attentively to what they are asking you don't assume if you don't understand ask for the question to be repeated and this is a very very important tip that my mentor told me before i left my placement she said that don't assume anything if you heard the question you were not sure about what they've asked you you can tell them oh please can you kindly repeat that question oh sorry i don't understand could you expatiate more explain more about what you're asking something like that it's better than for you to give an answer that is totally off the question that they have asked you. For instance, if they asked you when was your last teaching experience and you're telling them what you did in your last job where you were a manager, you have failed your question. So be very, very attentive to what they're asking you. If you feel like you're confused, don't assume what your answer should be. Actually get clarification on what you've, what you've been asked, okay? The third tip would be share your experience with the children not just your experience in general for instance um i remember they asked me a question in my interview for not this job i'm working on the last interview where the assistant head teacher really liked my interview and um referred me to this my new job she asked me a question she said um how does my previous experience link to my new path and while i talked about what i did as a you know seven years working in the pension industry blah 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 it was very very useful for me to link that to how that has taught me to work with children if that makes sense you're interviewing to be a teacher you're not interviewing to be a manager you're not interviewing to be an accountant you're interviewing to be a teacher whatever your answer is you must link it to how does that promote you as a teacher with children so you're not just saying oh i'm going to be a great teacher i'm an interesting teacher i jog i'm very physical you know if you're a phd teacher you want to say oh i play football mm -mm, nobody cares about what you do with your life the question here is how can you give what you have to those children what have you done with children in that light for instance i worked in the pension industry for seven years um it has taught me managerial skills it has taught me great teamwork and with the children in my placement i have been able to teach them how this also relates in their own lives as individuals how teamwork plays around for instance whenever i plan a lesson i make sure that each lesson the children have groups or the children work in groups the children work in learning partners things like that always make sure that your answer links back to what you have done or what you can plan for the children to help the children every school is looking for what you have to offer the children they're not looking for what you as an individual have to offer yourself 
or offer the offer the school in general no their first priority is the children if they want to ask you what you can offer the school they will ask you okay can you tell us now if we employ you how can you be a valuable team member to the school or why have you chosen this school something like that you, they will tell you when they want to you to talk about what you can do for the school but any other question be rest assured that they are looking out for what you can do for with and around the children okay very very important tip right the next thing is kyc in every path of life you need kyc know your customer who is your customer here teacher your customer is your children know your customer know who children are what the children want be aware of what the children want what the children need okay know your customer your second customer here is the school research i don't need to tell you that right even when you're applying for a managerial job you research on the company so what stops you from researching the school go on the school's website what are the school's values do they have after school clubs what clubs can you offer what things can you do outside of teaching what can you do for the community the school's community what can you do for the community where the school is what can you do to encourage the children in your classroom kyc know your customer if you're applying for a job as a year six teacher or a key stage one teacher check the school's website what is key stage one all about what are they currently <coughs> excuse me where did i come from <coughs> what are they currently teaching the children very very important go through the school's website what are their values what's the culture but not every school has the same culture in fact their cultures are all different their what's that thing called their values are all different some people their own might be honesty integrity and kindness some people their own might be uh ambition curiosity it depends so everybody has different values not as in that all school has the same values think about and research what the school is about know your customer you have to be prepared for every school differently okay which also brings me to the point of when you're filling your application form, don't copy and paste what you sent for Lagbaja Nigerian Primary School to Shibuola Nigerian Primary School. Don't copy and paste. Shibuola Nigerian Primary School is different from Lagbaja Nigerian Primary School. So read through. I don't read this. Make it come. <laughs> Which guy is saying? What? Who should I say? He insults my, my primary school. <laughs> it's not even an insult. I just did it as an example. Why is he my school? Give me no go school. Okay, let's sorry. Why is he my school? Okay, I'll use both of our school. Should we allow Nigerian primary school? No, I'm not going to allow Nigerian primary school. Wait now. Leave Shibola out of your mouth. Oh yeah, wait. Leave Shibola out of your mouth. Okay, hold on. <laughs> let's go back. Sorry, retrace. Donald International School is different from Shibola Noja Primary School. <laughs> so <laughs> don't copy the form that you use for Donald International School and copy it and paste it. Shibola Noja Primary School. Shibola Noja Primary School might not have swing. Donald Noja Primary School we have swing. Do you understand? So you have to. Shibola does not have. You have to be sure of what you're saying in your form. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you are making my video wrong. You know, time is going right. Let's keep going. Right, the next thing I want to talk about in the form is on the part of the form, it says write your statement. Right, keep your statement to one page, highest I mean, between one page to two pages. Don't go and start writing four pages personal statement, though. One page to two pages of your personal statement. Your personal statement should focus on your jd every school has their own jd when you're about to apply using that form it comes with like the application on every website every application that you download has the application form it has the expectations of the school it has your jd so it also has your job requirements what is the school looking for your personal statement must there, this one is not once your personal statement is not tailored to that thing forget it you're, you're not even going to be successful at all you must tailor your personal statement to every single point in your jd 
and the job requirements for for instance the job requirements might have five points maybe number one experience in safeguarding blah 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 number two experience in or show that you can work as a team in the school community and with the children number three show that you can build personal but professional relationships and maintain those relationships with the children when you're writing your personal statement you will say break it down under that maybe tasks or responsibilities or something first heading you will write you will copy and paste that experience bah, inside you will now write what your thing is or <clears throat> under that first heading where it says maybe sometimes they divide it into two one will be personal experiences the other one will be teaching skills so you can do a heading teaching skills and then answer every single point on that skills in different paragraphs the second one will be to put them in different headings but you can do it in different paragraphs so the first one you're answering the first paragraph second point you're answering in the second paragraph so it's clearly seen then after you finish doing skills there's another one for personal experiences you do the heading personal experiences and answer each point in different paragraphs if you don't tailor every single application you're sending for every single school to what they have asked you in your job requirements i'm sorry to say but you're already heading towards i regret to inform you <clears throat> that's it okay the next tip is no safe garden no safe garden see this one no cause for contest you can't miss it you can't escape it no matter what you do there's no exit if you don't know safeguarding, nobody is going to employ you in the UK. You must know safeguarding. Know how to answer every question. In fact, if you're watching this video or you're preparing for an interview, if, if you don't know safeguarding by now, you need to go back to university, go back to BGC or however you learnt education in the UK because they must have told you about safeguarding. So, no safeguarding. And every single question that they ask you at your interview, somehow tailor safeguarding into it tailor safeguarding into every response as in so they know that safeguarding is your thing is my stuff i'm confident let me get safeguarding you must your shoulder must be high for safeguarding or else you've lost them so be confident in your safeguarding skills <laughs> and then the next one my next point here is if you feel you're not too sure you can take in for instance i took in my sheets i told you i had i have a list of questions i took in the, that sheet wrote out my questions wrote my answers in that sheet and then took in that sheet to my interview that's what i actually did so take it in it might give you more confidence if you feel like you need to look at it at any point for any question you can actually say oh i hope it's okay that i have when you step into the interview my mentor told me this she said it's okay and you can say to them oh i've brought in you know my practice sheet just to help me feel more confident so i can remember the things i've written down to be more prepared and things like that always talk with a smile even if you feel like you're stuck approach with a smile and give out that confidence i am a teacher with confidence i know what i am doing okay <clears throat> remember your focus is the children not you employers care about your experience and what you can offer the children more than you who you are and what you can offer them of course everybody wants to know about you they might say tell me about yourself everybody wants to know about you however their main focus is what can you offer my children okay be detailed in your answers but with a little as little words as possible go straight to the point for instance if they've asked you um what what was your best lesson that you've ever taught don't start from saying oh i went into school one day and i was feeling really down and even though i had prepared nobody cares go straight to the point i thought a mass lesson on blah 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 blah. with the children i came up with a solution blah 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 always include with the children i did with the children i did i did this with the children with the children i've said this too many times your question your answer must always be i taught the children this i showed the children how to and then they were able to use what i had showed them to develop their own skills or to get better or to do their independent work and things like that so always focus your answer on what you did with the children basic summary okay this video is already too long i think i'll stop here if you have any questions whatsoever any questions at all please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section or send me an email at the ogolanos at gmail.com it's always in my description box don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
and yeah we love you always baby come and do hearts with me <coughs> stand up now <laughs> we love you always <laughs> thank you for watching this video come on <laughs> see you all in the next one bye